Please welcome back Garrett. So I'm just going to ask a few questions before we can open it up to the audience. But um, Yared, you were born in Ethiopia. Uh, you studied filmmaking in New York. Um, could you talk about what motivated you to become a storyteller and how you put your experiences on this film, which is your first feature? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yes, I originally from Ethiopia, and I left when I was 10. And uh, I went to NYU, and one of my professors of aesthetics, Gail Sidney, also a filmmaker, is here in the audience. <laughs> and, uh, um, but what motivated me to be a filmmaker um, is, uh, well, I went to NYU to help, uh, but really, essentially, I think I credit my grandmother uh, because, um, I mean, at the core, in a deeper way, because uh, she was very famous for her storytelling um, and uh, with the old Ethiopian fable and all that. And so I grew up with her great stories. And uh, I grew up in the Mercato neighborhood of Addis Ababa. And uh, people gather around all the time to hear her stories. So had my grandmother been brought up in the US, she would have probably been a filmmaker, I guess. You know, But I'm not at her level. <laughs> Um, can you talk about what it was like returning to Ethiopia to make this film um, and what you really wanted to convey since it's very rare to see this country represented on the big screen? What I wanted to convey? Um, so it's semi-autobiographical. Um, I uh, had a really happy childhood in Ethiopia, but uh, because we were having war at the time with, uh, when I grew up with Somalia and so forth and we had a communist dictatorship, I had to leave behind everybody I, I, I loved, uh, the home and the family that I loved, I had to leave them behind by myself at age 10 and came to America. And uh, so the theme is very much my life story. It was that little kid in me whose heart was broken. Um, but and as far as the, the actual story, I, I grew up in a city, I never had a pet, and uh, I don't like to cook, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, uh, so much of it is, uh, is um, imagination. Uh, as, 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 a, as a filmmaker. Um, but so part is personal, and another part is political, because um, I grew up in, um, you know, in, in Virginia and New Hampshire, and people always telling me, you know, Ethi they think Ethiopia is a flat desert, so it's quite the opposite. So, you know, often people can project what you are, but you could be quite opposite of that. And as, as, an, as an Ethiopian, as an African, I want to reclaim the image of the world and the complexity and the beauty and the humanity that I, I knew and I remember. And I hope more, um, there'll be more African filmmakers to tell their stories and not BBC or CNN. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, could you talk about what it was like um, directing not only a child actor but also an animal? Um, well, for the filmmakers here, you know, number one rule in Hollywood, uh, something we learned at NYU, is never work with children or animals. In this case, it's not just a boy and a lamb, but you, if you pay attention, there are a lot of animals and a lot of kids and in rural East Africa. So, um, so it was basically, this film was next to impossible to finance. I, I was an unknown director. Ethiopia has relatively unknown or misunderstood part of the world. It was tricky, but to answer your question about the kids, um, well, it was really difficult. <laughs> it was difficult. I, it was very risky, and uh, um, but I will say that that it's not only kids and children, but we don't have a culture of cinema in Ethiopia, of like international cinema. So I had to basically audition everyone from my my aunt to people off the street, and it took me six months auditioning seven thousand people. Um, recorded with my assistant, about half of them were kids, and because again we don't have culture of cinema, you know, we're not Iran or South Korea, we basically had to find those that are naturally gifted, and also Ethiopia, you know, our culture we raised to be very shy, so Ethiopians are very, uh, they call us the Japanese of Africa, you know, it's very shy and very, so they're afraid to face the camera and to reveal and to be open, and so I had to find all that, uh, and. Um, it took, yes, six months, you know, 7,000 people. And as far as the sheep, uh, many people ask me uh, if there are kids here. 
um, basically the northern Ethiopian breed of lamb um, are uh, this copper colored. So we just got five lamb. The boy raised them for three months, so it's a real attachment. But we couldn't keep them together because um, they naturally follow the f dominant female. So in order to form an attachment, he had to raise them on their own. To make a long story short, the whole movie, um, five were on set, trained, but only one was the smartest. So you only see one, I'm happy to say. <laughs> Uh, we can start taking questions from the audience, if there are any. Uh, yes, right here. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, I'm very proud of uh, Ethiopia. You know, we were Christian uh, before Europe, and when our uh, Jewish king, Azana, converted in 34 AD. And um, so, yeah, we are an ancient Judeo-Christian culture. Um, we also have ancient uh, Islam community. And um, we coexist. Um, and in my family, we are mostly Christian, but we have Jews and we have Muslims. And there, I have an uncle named Muhammad, but he's Christian because he chose to be because his father was Muslim, his mother was Christian. And when he grew up, they said, you know, it's up to you. So. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very beautiful, and I'm very proud of that. Um, I grew up in a religiously mixed uh, neighborhood as well. And again, this is something you don't see in, around the world, um, it, that there are big regions of the world, and Ethiopia has the second biggest population in Africa, where we, we, it's incredible, 83 languages, 83 ethnic group, all these religions, but we do coexist. And this movie is an homage to, to that, and I hope we, we will keep it despite living across from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but I'm hoping for that it remains peaceful and as it is. And I'm very proud of that. And thank you. Yes, right over here. Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I would say probably, probably the end came first about this idea of uh, of um, having to let go. Yeah. Um, it was made in uh, 2014, and um, the premiere was in 2015. Next film. <laughs> okay, it's very different than this. <laughs> uh, so, but in short, Lamb, as you saw, it's, uh, it's about childhood, so it's contemplative and kind of uh, fable-like. Um, the next film is about youth, e Ethiopian youth, because they make up the majority of the population, um, uh, Ethiopian youth like myself, but um, they didn't have the chance to go and grow up in America and go to NYU. And it's basically, the next film is about these uh, beautiful, brilliant, but struggling Ethiopian youth that are taking on dangerous journeys um, across the sea to Europe, across the desert to Arabia, and across the savannah to South Africa. But it's not a cliche about being victims, or it's not a sad tale, but rather a kind of a heroic uh, tale about self-determination um, regarding these, these uh, beautiful Ethiopian youth. That, that's my next film. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, over here in the black. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the question yes. is about the relationship um, with his cinematographer. Yes, uh, th uh, my cinematographer, Jose Deschais, uh, she's French Canadian. I'm proud she's a woman. Um, and she'd never been on the African continent or so. Um, so it was like, I, I like that. I like that she was Canadian from a neutral country, coming to Ethiopia, a country with no colonial history. So I like this neutrality, and there, there's no judgment, there's no assumption. So that's part of the reason why I chose her. Another reason is because she is famous. I was really afraid to work with her, because <laughs> she's experienced and she's older than me. And, but she was brilliant, and, and um, she didn't make me feel uncomfortable at all. She really 
uh, respected me and, 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 and I had to get over my own nervousness working with her. Uh, but I chose her because she is, um, because she, th her previous films, uh, all of them in, uh, have gotten to Cannes. She basically has really good lighting interior with candles, which you need in a, in a, for, you know, this is Africa, and a lot of Ethiopia does not have electricity. Where we shot, it's, there's, you know, there's no p power. So, so I really liked what she can do with candles. Um, and we had that discussion. Another just kind of discussion, for example, is, uh, you know, Ethiopians, we're, we are dark skin and light skin. We have all, we're not mixed. Everybody thinks we're mixed, but it's just we're naturally like variety of colors from even within the same family. And it's very tricky to light, you know, a dark skin person and light skin person next to each other. And she came up with this brilliant scheme to put powder on the darker skinned Ethiopians and on the lighter skinned Ethiopians to put oil, like she just is brilliant, it's just so organic. And what she does with natural lighting, with candles, considering the skin color, which is again, with Ethiopians is tricky. Um, and those sort of discussions. Um, and uh, I have so, much, so many things to say about, about it, but I, wa I won't bore the audience. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right up here in front. Question is about uh, inspiration for the film. Um, I, inspiration, uh, uh, Kurosawa, Japanese, you know, where landscape speaks as character, and uh, also Iranian films like Kiryastami, um, you know, um, like The Taste of Cherry, and all those films. Th they've been a big influence on me, and uh, I, I chose, I chose to do landscape because, um, you know. Ethiopia was never colonized. It's about the size of two Texas. And, but m that's primarily because uh, the mountains were impenetrable. We are a mountain people. 80% of Africa's mountains are in Ethiopia. And so uh, the vegetation, the way of life, the culture, um, our, you know, uh, our food, the way we look, is all shaped by the mountain. We're essentially mountain people. And uh, so much of who we are are these mountains. And so it's very important for me to have them the mountain itself is a big character, yeah. Oh, it's a long answer, but in, in short, uh, I uh, went back um, after uh, like 13 years and I lived uh, in Ethiopia for three years working on this film. And uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it, w it was another world because it was a communist dictator when I was there. And by the time I went back, it was a different um, system and way of life and more capitalist and wealthier than I remember it. So it's just changed so much. But that's a, a long answer. <laughs> yeah. Yes, over there in the white hat. Um, yeah, it was really wonderful. Um, basically, the people you see in the film, that a lot of the elderly, they're real farmers in the Gondor region. And uh, the CNN uh, went to, did a show on this film. And they went to that area where there's no electricity. They probably didn't know what filmmaking was and didn't know what we we're doing. And I, it was a lot of a. Uh, so CNN took them on a bus to the nearest town in, in Gondor and they showed the film. And it was probably the first time a lot of them farmers had seen a film. And uh, what they said uh, was uh, the best review I've had. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right here. Yeah, thank you. I, and I understand because some people think I'm doing a nostalgic look at Ethiopia. But no, this is very contemporary. It's Ethiopia today, but in the countryside. Because the city, which is my next film, 
are skyscrapers and metro and hectic life and kind of like here and uh, you know you know fashionable kids and things like that so but this is but a, you know 80 percent of Ethiopia 85 percent of Ethiopians are subsistence farmers it's a mostly rural country and what you see is not costume for the film Th these are actual like the Gojam that's my mother's tribe the the, the Gojam costume this is pr you know these are farmers in their real clothes with real tools and living as they live so this is um, most of Ethiopia as it is but part of the reason I'm doing this is because um, it will change in about 50 to 100 years. All this traditional clothes will be gone. All this way of life is be gone. So it's almost like a anthropological data, you know. It's just a memory of how we, but we are still, um, you know, living this way of life yeah, for the most part, except me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right there. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, people like Hale Girima, uh, the Ethiopian director, has paved the way for, in a way. I mean, he's the first. And um, he got to see my film in, uh, at Carthage in Tunisia, and that was an honor. And uh, I, of course, I'm influenced by Simbene. Um, so, um, and, uh, but, but there are a few of us uh, as a whole. It, in Cannes, when this film came out in 2015, uh, it was the only film from the African continent. And I didn't know until reporters told me. And uh, it, I don't know Africa, you know, I, I'm only from Ethiopia, I'm Ethiopian, you know. I don't even know all of Ethiopia. So uh, it's a big continent you can put for United States and so it's a shame because it's so vast and, and so beautiful and so it's a shame that I hope that there'll be more. Um, but uh, there just aren't enough of us and, but, um, it, yeah, hopefully that will change over time. Yeah. Uh, we have time for one last question. Yes, right here. Question is about um, choosing the music for the film. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, in short, uh, the music is, uh, I love music, and so that's probably what you're seeing. And uh, I have a huge collection of Ethiopian music, traditional, old, and contemporary. So it was really fun for me to put it together, and so every music is very, like, intentional. So thank you for that. Um, so music speaks to me, I listen to music when I write, so it's all, you know, I think all art, more or less, we connect. Um, but it's ter in terms of the composer, he's a, he's a Caribbean uh, man of, of Caribbean origin, French um, composer. Um, and I chose him because I was afraid of this film turning out to be folkloric. And I wanted to, um, I know that the world will see it. So I really, um, I wanted to have something that people in the outside world could connect with. But I want them to appreciate Ethiopian music, but also many people tell me, the piano made me feel closer. It, 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 everything was not alien to me because the piano made me feel closer. So it was that kind of trying to find that balance. And uh, that's a long answer and short. <laughs> thank you. Yard, thank you so much for being here. Thank and you. For presenting the film. Yeah, thank you very much.